Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Real Talk here on TV 35. I'm your host, Pat Brock, and we're here on the beautiful campus of Dublin High School where the fighting Irish do their thing. We've got the great Dr. Tony Jordan with us. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, ma'am. How about yourself? Doing well. It's always a pleasure to see you, sir. It's always a pleasure to have you here with us, ma'am. And you know, this is a special time. Of course, the kids are getting ready for testing, and Dr. Jordan, I hear you wanted to bring this young man here whom you've inspired. Well, you know, it's amazing. We, we tell our stories over and over, and sometimes Sometimes our students think that we are so far removed from what's going on in the real world. Right. And I thought it would be a great idea to have someone their age, someone who's walked the walk, yeah. to come in and have a conversation with them about the um, importance of making great choices. That's right. And I think I made a great choice in bringing Malik in. He did a fantastic job today with our students. Very good. All right, we've got Mr. Malik with us here. Malik Jones, inspired by Malik, share with yes. us uh, today because this is an exciting time for you to be able to come back and be able to give back because of the things that you've gone through. Tell us a little bit about your your entrepreneurship and of course you coming here today to inspire our youth. Um, it's definitely been a dream come true for me, man. This road, this journey has definitely been amazing. But to be able to be on this journey and to come back to the places that I visited along my journey, being an at-risk youth myself, being a troublemaker, um, but to be able to come back to Dublin, Georgia, if I spent five months of my at-risk lifestyle in Dublin to give back to the Fighting Irish and to speak in front of my former principal, Dr. Yeah. Jordan, it was definitely an honor today for me and a dream come true um, on this big venue and platform. And do you ever think that while you were going through all that you were going through, the different avenues, the roads that you took, the challenges that you made that you would be where you are today? I always knew I wanted to be a celebrity. I wanted to be the center <laughs> of attention. Uh, so therefore, I, I didn't ever think it as a motivational speaker, but I always knew I wanted to be something big. Well, my dream job is to run the country, but before I can run the country, I have to make a change in myself, my mm -hmm. community, and then my state, and then I can change the world. And what's the key thing in what changed you and how you changed from that young man that you started off to where you are now? Um, the cycle, being coming from a single parent home, having my dad being in prison all of my life and his mother raising me, he was just like, you know what, why well, continue to make the cycle over and over again? Why can't I stand up and be something different? So I began to, you know, think of different avenues, different ways. And I said, hey, a lot of people told me, you got a story, young man. That's and right. I seen that I had a story and I want to use it to the best of my ability to inspire the younger generation who remind me of my younger self. And now you have that platform to do so. Now, Dr. Jordan, when you see one of your, uh, one of the young men that you've seen from early on, and you see where he is today. He owes credit to you for how you pushed him, how you stayed on him. I think that it's important when we're leaders, when we're mentors, when we have been placed on this earth to be a blessing to those other, those youth that we see, to pull them up by the bootstrap, so to speak, it does get emotional, it's Doc. Yeah, and there's absolutely. nothing wrong with that because that's when you know that your labor is not in vain. Absolutely, this is from the heart. Yeah. Um, and to see this, I mean, it makes it all worthwhile. Mm -hmm. This is what we. This is why we do what we do. That's right. Um, and there are many more Maliks in this audience, yeah. and many more Maliks in the world, and there are many more Maliks that I can yeah. potentially inspire. So that that's my passion. Um, and this this brings it home for me. Yeah. Um, this yeah. this definitely brings it home. Yeah. He did an, an outstanding job. Um, and it just made me realize that my work did not go in vain. That's right. Um, That's right. I, I would not let him give up on himself. That's he'll right. he'll tell you that. We 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 had many conversations. Um, so I, I saw the potential early mm -hmm. on. Came from a great family. Yeah. Lots of support from his siblings. Um, but look at him now. Yeah. Um, look at him he's, now. He's turning around. That's so right. I'm yeah. really proud of him. And he's living to tell about his tale. So thank you so much, Malik. You're about to actually hear this young man as he inspires uh, a generation of people here at the Dublin High School Auditorium. And thank you, Dr. Jordan, for how you continue to yet inspire. Thank you, ma'am. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Malik Jones, inspired by Malik. You know, we often talk about how important it is to be able to mentor uh, young people. And of course, we've got Mr. Shed Dawson with us, retired Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us, sir. Thank you. Now, share with us a little bit about yourself and your relationship with uh, Malik. Well, the first time I uh, met Malik was at a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And he requested an audience with one of the black men. Mm -hmm. And it was about four or five of us there. And yeah. he basically told us his story. And he was emotional tears was coming out mm -hmm. and uh, he got to me yeah. and so I put him to the side and I told him uh, okay I'm your stepfather now yeah. I'll be your mentor I'll listen to you what you have to say mm -hmm. I won't tell you what you should do I'll tell you what I would do right. if I was you 
Mm -hmm. And so I basically, right now, I just stay in the background. I'm his worst critic. Mm -hmm. When we go back, I'll tell him what I thought about the speech he just did today mm -hmm. and what I would have did or, you know, how it sounded to me. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we record it and we go over it. Very good. And, you know, and it's like when you, when you see this young man on the stage and you remember when you first met him. And um, what things do you like to instill within him that you hope that he takes with him wherever he goes? Well, his life and my life are pretty much the same coming mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And so it's easy for me to be a mentor to him because I've been down the road that he's right. going down. Right. And I know some of the things that he's going to you know, run up against. Mm -hmm. And I try to warn him in advance, you know, if you go this way, this might happen. If right. you go that way, that might happen. At least that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's basically what we're all about. That's wonderful. And tell us about this pen that we're looking at here. That is the 100 Black Men of Savannah pen. I'm a member of the 100 Black Men of Savannah. And tell us something about what your organization does. We mainly uh, mentor in the school system in the mm -hmm. Chapman County. We're at, elite, we're at about 35 schools. And we go to the classes and we do about 45 minutes per class. Mm -hmm. And we meet with that particular class twice a month. Right. Well, we thank you so much for all that you do, for the many years of serving um, others, and, of course, now how you mentor not just Malik but other young people. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Dawson here. You know, there's nothing like family, and it's so important to be able to have that family support system. Of course, Malik has his older brother with us, Jason Lawton. How are you, Jason? I'm great. <laughs> How does it feel um, to be able to support your younger brother to see where he started out and to see where he is today? I mean, it is always a blessing, like, to see him go through, like, different phases of his life yeah. and to go through many challenges and to become, like, the person he's becoming. And yeah. I can say from here on now, I can see that this is only the beginning of it. Only the and beginning. And I can see that he has a great future ahead of him. That's right. And it's great to be a part of that. You know, we, he shared about, you know, how he was, how he started out, you know. Mm -hmm. And you as the brother, you really know the deal. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's so when you see him now and here you are with your life, um, tell us what inspires you. What inspires me the most is that at times, I feel like times change. Yeah. At one point in time, he was ins I was inspiring him a yeah. lot, mm -hmm. and now the times has changed. Now I listen to him speak. Yeah. I listen to a lot of his, his shows, his venues, and it's like, wow. Yeah. This is the stuff I've been telling him, but it's like now it's being directed towards me now. So it's like, wow, I can use this as inspiration as well. Yeah. And you know? I, I think that you inspire one another. Yeah. Because it's like the time when he really needed for you to pour into him and to encourage there. him, that's part of the reason where he is now and mm -hmm. why he's where he is now. So, you know, give yourself some credit in being that big brother to try to look after, you know, your brother like that. And now here it is, um, the phase in your life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so what's next for you, Jason? Uh, as of now, right now I'm working on a portfolio. Um, I'm into lyrics. Nice. I'm in the rap career. Mm -hmm. um, so until then, I'm just, uh, I'm working, I'm selling shoes and stuff like that. Yeah. Just to like, because we, we have the same interests. We don't like, you know, being told what to do. So that's why Jaws, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like Jaws for right. us is like, okay, we go through these like different phases of these jobs yeah. and we take but so much and then it comes like to like a, it always comes to an end, like, okay, this is enough. It's time right. to do something else, right. you know. Yeah. So you're destined to be your own boss, right? Absolutely. All right, very good. Well, much success to you, Jason. Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you for how you have poured into your baby brother, and now he's back pouring into you, and Absolutely. you're giving it both ways. So thank you so much. All right. Much thank success you. to you. This is Jason Lawton, ladies and gentlemen. For your tax return this year, call the reliable tax professionals at CNL Tax and Accounting Service. Hi, I'm Brenda Chang. Come see us this year at CNL Tax and Accounting, where you can get your maximum refund. Brenda Chang and her staff are trusted income tax preparers who take the time to give you good quality tax advice. Come see us this year, where we're offering up to $2,500 in cash advance loans. CNL Tax and Accounting Service is located on Madison Street in Dublin. 
Hi, I'm Perry Williamson. We've been serving the Devil and Lawrence community for over 90 years here at Williamson's Bakery. We specialize in donuts, cakes, pies, cupcakes, cookies, birthday cakes. They're our business, not a hobby. And don't forget our large selection of cheese straws. For special orders, contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or better yet, just come get you some. When you stop by, be sure to try our all new Pig in the Blankets. We have bacon, sausage, and chicken. We're located at 1634 Veterans Boulevard, Dublin, Georgia. With the hot, freshest donuts, come to Williamson's Bakery. We proudly support our area athletics. It is an honor to be here to speak to you young people today, man. As you guys get ready and get prepared to take this end of the course test coming up in the next few weeks, guys, I just want to sit here and let you guys know that it's not the end. It's the end of the course for this year. <laughs> but it's only gonna start your course for next year and the next test that you're gonna to begin to take in life. See, young people, there's tests and everything that you do in life. Your tests don't end in school, but the test that you take in school that end of course exam, it's not gonna define you. It's not, just if you fail that test, and I'm telling you, you're not gonna fail it, because guess what, that's what I'm here today to let you know, you're not gonna fail that test. Because if you do everything that I tell you to do here today, you're gonna to pass that test. And I don't want you guys to just strive for 70. That's the first thing I want to tell you guys. Because, see, I was a test taker in school, and I really didn't like to take tests like that. And sometimes, you know what I would say? I just want to score a 70. But guess what? If you've been scoring a 70 all year, if you score a 70 on that test, it's not going to look so good for you. So that's why I want to tell you guys right now, don't be average when you go in there and take that test. Don't take that test as a joke. Dominate that test. Think about all the other people who are aiming for 100. So would you have 100 other people, maybe 200 other people aiming for 100, you aim for 110. In life, everybody's trying to give 60, 70. Nobody really want to give 110 and 120%. And I'm able to tell you guys this because I've seen what it feel like to give 110%. I go running every morning. One day I got up and I said, you know what, I want to run 10 miles. I want to see how long it takes me to run 10 miles. Well, I completed 10 miles in an hour and 30 minutes. And the completion said 110% completed. Do you know how that made me feel? So I say that to say is, if you get your end of the course test results back, and it just so happened to say 110% completed, how would that make you feel? You'll feel dominant. You won't feel average. Because I know a lot of you came in here today, you said, you know what? This is probably going to be an average motivational speaker. He don't know what he talking about. He probably going to be somebody old. But y'all didn't know y'all was getting this, did y'all? I know somebody who knew they was getting this. I had somebody over the weekend in my tournaments that I was officiating, and I told him I'll be here. I don't know if he think I was playing, but guess what, guys? I'm here, and I'm here to inspire you guys, all right? So let's get into this presentation that I have for you guys, man. Life, I want you guys to know that it's definitely not always about to start. Where my athletes at? Athletes, make some noise. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, I know Dublin fighting Irish gym don't sound like that when y'all in them basketball games and y'all just was in the Sweet 16. We're going to try this again. Athletes, make some noise. Okay, so athletes, y'all know that life and games are full of runs, especially my basketball players. Life and games is full of runs. It's not always about the start. It's, more, it's mostly an important part of your journey is about your finish. So right now, you guys are really, you're one step away from the finish line. You're one step away from mastering that test, getting ready to be ready to go to the next level and start to take more tests. See, on my journey, <laughs> on my journey to get here, I had to go through many tests. And I ain't talking about multiple choice answer tests or standardized tests. I'm talking about real tests, life tests. I'm talking about people telling me what I wouldn't do. I'm talking about those people telling me I wouldn't graduate. People told me I wouldn't even be standing here today. <laughs> and it's somebody that's sitting out here today when I tell you my story, as I begin to let you know a little bit about me and how far I've come, that really inspired me to go hard and to keep going. And guess one of the things he tell me now? I can't even talk about you the same anymore. When they mention your name, I can't shake my head and say, I don't know what he got going on. I have to talk proud about you now. <laughs> it's a lot of people that's going to do that. It's a lot of people that you're going to count in life. But the first thing I want you guys to do is believe in yourself. Believe in yourself, young people, because let me tell you something. Everybody that you think believe in you, <laughs> everybody that you think are down for you, boy, I tell you, as you begin to elevate in life, as you begin to go to the next level, 
Those are going to be the same people that are going to talk about you. Those are going to be the same people that are going to become friend of me's. They're going to want to bring up every secret that you told them. They want to bring up every struggle that you went through. But guess what? They're going to want to bring you down. But guess what? When they try to do that to you, you tell them, don't place your limitations on me, and you keep going. Let me tell you guys, I want you to repeat this one thing after me. Hard work pays off. Repeat after me. Hard work pays off. Now, y'all can do a little better than that. Now, I'm not going to keep going back and forth with telling y'all. It's 600 students in here, young people. It is 600 students in here. I've been in an auditorium smaller than this. Y'all can make some noise. We're going to try this one more time. Hard work pays off. Nothing is given to you in life. These teachers are not going to give you anything, young people, and the real world is definitely not going to give you anything. Everything that you want in life, you're going to have to work for it, and you're going to have to work hard for it. Hello, I'm Taylor Knight from the Community Bank of Dublin, Lawrence County, and we offer great customer service. Come in today and let us open a checking, savings, or CD account for you. So come see us at the Community Bank of Dublin, Lawrence County, where we have been serving the community for more than 12 years. There are many ways of doing business today. Hello? Call centers, mobile apps. Right away. But when it comes to what really matters, our way is pretty simple. To be there when you need us most. That's the quality of your independent agent and the company that stands behind them. Or Insurance in Dublin is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. The end of the course test, don't quit. Don't take it as a joke, young people, but give it your best. Don't stop just at the EOCT. Many tests will arouse you, young people, especially as you elevate different levels in life. The EOCT does not define you, but you need to pass. You must give your EOCT your all, because at the end of the day, there are many tests that are going to arise you that you have to give your all. Some of you will go to college. Some of you will enter the workforce. Some of you will actually become your own entrepreneur, your own boss, like myself. But in order to get to that level, young people, you have to put in a hard, lot of hard work and dedication. You have to put in a lot of knowledge, a lot of hours of studying. How many of you guys have already been studying to get ready to take this test? Let me see a show of hands. Be honest. And I thank you guys for your honesty, because guess what? I didn't study. Where the class clowns at? Raise your hands. I was you. Where the ones that think they know everything and every time a teacher says something, you talk it back to them? Raise your hand. Guess what? I was you. But guess what? It taught me something. And guess what? At the end of the day, these same teachers, you're going to need. How many of you guys sitting in classes that you feel like you're not going to need? Raise your hand. Well, I'm here to tell you, boy, you went for a rude awakening. How many of those who just raised their hands plan on going to college? Well, guess what? You're really in a rude awakening. I thought I wouldn't need an art class. I needed it. Guess what they did to me? Senior year, they put me in an art class. I thought I didn't need it. Freshman year of college, they put me in an online art class. So I say that to tell you, everything that these teachers are stealing in you, you're going to need it. Stop taking the time to post on social media and study, young people. There's a lot of things I wish I would have did differently. Differently, because guess what? I probably would have been farther than where I'm at now. But everything in life happens to you for a reason. So don't get discouraged. When you get in there and you were trying to mark the right answer and you get discouraged, just skip the question, come on back. Don't spend too much time trying to figure out what the answer is. I know what it's like to take a test. I know what it's like to be under pressure. I know what it's like to have somebody tell you you're not going to make it, or you're, you're going to fail this test. Let that be your motivation to pass the test. See, I'm different from a lot of people. When you count me out, see, I count myself in. And as I count myself in, when you count me out, that's my motivation to keep going and to prove you wrong. I was like that all my life. So that built a relationship with my brother. So he would do, he would use reverse psychology on me. He would always use reverse psychology on me. I would tell him, I would say, hey, bro, you know, I want to do this. I want to He's like, nah, man, you ain't going to do that, man. I don't want to hear about it. He said, walk off and brush me off. But then he'll come around and he'll see I'm doing just that. Same when it came to me graduating. 
Where my seniors at? How many seniors I got in here? Okay, okay, we, we got some seniors. Seniors, 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 seniors. Let me tell y'all something. Boy, y'all think the intercourse test, y'all think y'all got an intercourse test to worry about. Man, y'all got the real world to worry about. College, the workforce, responsibilities. Man, if I could be you guys right now, I would be amazed. The first of the month when they have to pay rent, man, I don't like paying rent. That's why you guys need to come to school, do what you're supposed to do, and make your mamas proud. Go ahead and get those scholarships so you don't have to get in student loan debt. You don't want to get in debt. You're going to have to pay that debt back. So that's why it's very important for you guys to do everything that you need to do now in school so you can get that HOPE scholarship. You get these other scholarships and have your education paper. How many people, parents of millionaires in here? Don't raise your hand too high. Don't be ashamed. How many millionaire parents we got in here? So that means... If your parent is not a millionaire and they can't pay your full tuition, you should be going hard in these classrooms, not just on social media, not just trying to show off in front of your friends, not trying to make the teacher look bad, not going back and forth with the teacher. Guess what? The teacher, they got theirs. And seniors, when you get to college, the professors, they already got theirs. So guess what? You ain't got mama waking you up in the morning. You ain't got breakfast in the morning. You got to get up. You got to make your own breakfast. You got to be your own alarm clock. Because guess what? If you go to class or not, that professor got their money for the semester. That's going to be you getting in debt. That's going to be you wasting money. And you ain't even taking advantage of the money. That's just like if you sit here and you go in there and you go to sleep on the EOCT test. All the time that you put in in this school year is going to be going to waste. One thing you can't buy back is time, young people. That's why I'm here today to let you guys know that no matter what <laughs> was going on with you in the classrooms before now, right now you guys need to be under these teachers, ask these teachers for help and tutorial, whatever it is that you need in order for you to pass this end of the course test. Because guess what? You can do it and you will do it. But you got to put your mind to it. You can't, I can't want you to pass the test and you not want the test. I can't want you to score 110 and you just think about scoring a 70. You know how many people just want to score 70? That's what sets me as apart from a lot of people. A lot of people my age are probably giving 40 to 50%. How many of you guys have a TV? I about to say everybody got a TV, right? Well, guess what? I got my own house. I don't have a TV. You know why I don't have a TV? Because a TV is not important. This road that I'm on, the lifestyle I want, I can sacrifice the TV. See, now I'm about to really get into my previous thing. We got to talk about sacrifices, young people. Sacrifices. You got to make sacrifices in order to become successful. I had to make a lot of sacrifices to get here. I'm talking about people, many relationships, many habits, many things. I had to sacrifice my whole approach to things, my whole approach to life. Because guess what? I know what it is that I want out of life. How many people want to go to the NBA? How many people want to go to the NFL, national cheerleaders? Guess what? You know, the only way you're going to get there is by going to play at least one year of college, possibly. And how are you going to get in college? How do you think you're going to get in college? These same standardized tests, the ACT, the SAT, that is what these people are going to grade you off for to say, hey, are we going to give this person a scholarship? Are we going to put this person in support classes or not? That's why these standardized tests are so important to you, young people. See, I was that one to take the test for uh, granted. I remember I took the ASVAB just to get out of class. I took the ASVAB just to get out of class. But guess what? I thought I wanted to go to the military, but that wasn't the plan. It wasn't the plan that was for me. What I'm doing right now, I feel like this was the plan for me, to be able to stand here and inspire your young people. And in school, oh, my God, man, I was a class clown. I didn't listen, argue with the teachers. I wanted to run the hall. They didn't even call. Matter of fact, your principal, Mr. Dr. Jordan, he didn't even call me, Malik. You know what my name was? Joker. That's all I want to do all day, walk around school, joke, and do whatever I want to do. You couldn't tell me nothing. I used to make a mad someday. Got what you do, Malik? Just go home and come back tomorrow. I'm not gonna argue with you, son. That was a favorite word to me. Joker going home. He knew the whole family, but guess what? The same man who I disrespect a couple of times, he just gave me the opportunity to come here to inspire and motivate you guys today. Every teacher that's in here, they're gonna be able to help you in the future. They can be a reference to you for you to get into that college, for you to get that opportunity. You don't understand the power of a name and a testimonial from one person can change your life. Especially in the business that I'm in now, I'm going to need every principal, every teacher, 
who I probably disrespected to write off on, hey, this was a gay kid. I believe you should let him go speak to your youth. But guess what? You guys are at a position now where you can make things right with your teachers, with yourself, by going in there, doing what you're supposed to do on those tests, doing what you're supposed to do for the rest of the school year. And guess what? Even if you have failed, even if they, you, they say there's no real catching up, you still have the summer. It's not about the start, young people. It's always about that finish. My basketball players know. Matter of fact, Cleveland Cavaliers will tell you, <laughs> Golden State was up 3-1. LeBron James came through in a clutch. So that's what I expect for you guys to do. It's <clears throat> especially as I get ready to tell you guys my story. So now it's getting ready to get real. I done motivated you guys enough. I feel like I've inspired you guys enough. And now I feel like you guys are doing a little bit too much talking. So now it's time for me to really grasp you guys' attention as I get this jacket off. Because, see, I just want you guys to know that a lot of people doubted me. A lot of people said I wouldn't be here. But if I would have listened to them, I wouldn't be standing here today. See, at fifth grade, I built a reputation in school, young people. I was that bad kid, that bad kid who used to think he was a bully, but I was a different type of bully. I was the bully that beat up the bully. I had this group of this, uh, siblings. What they would do is, what the little boy would do, he would beat up his sister. So I would beat him up. I'm like, you want to beat up your sister? I beat him up. And what they did was, they set me up. Everybody on the bus, they got together, they wrote a statement. They brought a weapon. I never seen a weapon a day in my life until they pulled me out of class and said, you know what, claim your weapon, young man. And me, I was a jokester. I was bad. I'm laughing. I said, that is not my weapon. I don't know what you're talking about. It's my first time seeing it. My grandmother didn't know the severity of it. They sent me to the alternative school. I was in alternative school since I was in the fifth grade, young people. Fifth grade. Went to the alternative school. Found out two weeks later that everybody had done set me up. The statements match. Everything matched the same, so they felt like I was guilty. But if I was a good student, who kept the reputation, who kept my slate clean, they probably wouldn't have went that way for me. That's why it's very important for you guys to think about what you're doing now because it definitely can shape your future. You class clowns, guess what? When you do want to get your life together, when you all want to be, when you do want to be serious in the classroom and somebody crack a joke, nine out of 10, the teacher already think it's you. That's why you be getting, getting an argument with them saying it's not you because guess what? You have a reputation. That is your history. You don't want to have that in the real world Guess what? When you go out there, you make mistakes in the real world, there are people that are going to get you. And when they get you, you have to pay. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's time. My thing is, I don't like to waste time. That's why I don't watch TV. Watching TV is a waste of time. Bunch of ignorance on there. You know, nothing to help me really get to the next level. Why not put that tax return to good use this year and head on over to Hometown Supply in downtown Dublin, where you'll find a great line of golf carts, utility trailers, zero-turn mowers, and so much more. A little down goes a long way at Hometown Supply, and you can set up your account today. Talk to Glenn Register or any of his friendly staff, because we finance what we sell. Hometown Supply, located in downtown Dublin, across from the skyscraper, Call 272-0345. Coverage of this St. Patrick's event is brought to you by Dr. Jackson Fordham. Dr. Fordham and his staff have been providing our community with professional dental care for more than 30 years. Dr. Fordham would like to take this opportunity to thank all of his existing patients and invite anyone needing general dentistry to call for an appointment today. Dr. Jackson Fordham can be reached at 272-4051. Make an appointment today. Dr. Jackson Fordham, a proud sponsor of this St. Patrick's event. They sent me over to alternative school. I went over there for a while. I began to be around this environment. I'd already wanted to just be bad and cool. Being bad is not good. Being cool is not always good either. Because sometimes being cool can harm you. So when I went over to the alternative school, I just sat there. Stayed there, began to see all these guys. They want to talk about going to the juvenile. I was like, ooh, juvenile. Ooh, that's cool. I, I think I'm going to go to the juvenile. I'm going to build on my, my toughness, my bad guy resume. Nah, I was in a neighborhood. I told him, I said, you know what? I told the OG, I said, I want to go to juvenile. He said, you don't want to go there. So I went up going to sixth grade to the middle school. That's where the big boys was at. They were the big cool guys. So walking around, I'm messing with them. I'm bowing up at them, man. You ain't going to do nothing. I, they always call me little bro. 
But guess what? Those same young guys, they were in my situation, but they always told me, young man, this is not for you. But, bro, you don't belong here. They used to pick me up. I lived, They used to pick me up every day. I used to be bad on the bus stop, spread my legs out and beat me, beat me with a belt. Like, little bro, you better be good today. You better be good today. And now when I look back on it and some of their situations, some of those guys are in prison. Some of those guys are dead. But guess what? Those guys saved my life. See, I'm here today not only to inspire and empower you guys, but I'm here to help some of you guys know that the sky's the limit for each and every one of you young people, no matter what your background is, no matter what you've been through this far, because guess what? Once you leave out here today, you can do whatever it is that you set your mind to. I'm not going to tell you something that somebody told me. I'm going to tell you something that I've done for myself. Everything they told me that I wouldn't do, I'm coming back for it. I make posts a lot that I'm coming for everything that they owe me. But most of all, everything I owe myself. You owe yourself to be successful. And outside of yourself, you owe your parents. Your parents that are working right now, trying to make money to pay those bills, for you to get an education, for you to have a better future, you guys need to repay them. By going to school, coming in here, doing exactly what you need to do in order to be successful and to make a living for your family. How many single parents we have, how many single parent homes we have here? Raise your hand. Well, guess what? I came from a single parent home. I know my dad for six months and two weeks. And that's why I'm about to get into this part of the story of my sixth grade year. My dad spent eight and a half years in prison, came home for two weeks, and went back to jail. You know what he told me when he came home? He told me he was here to stay. When he came home and he went back in two weeks, boy, it was like taking a candy from a baby. So that's why I'm able to tell you guys, you don't make excuses. See, when he came home and told me that promise to me, I began to withdraw. Withdraw from everything. I was angry. I was upset that he came into my life and told me he was here to stay. So guess what? He came home. I was already in sixth grade. I was already at alternative school, already hearing these guys talking about how juvenile was cool. Then my dad stayed in prison. So I'm like, hey, there must be something to it. He don't want to be in my life, so there must be something cool about that. So I began to go down that track. When those two weeks after he got locked up, the first thing I did was I went to school and I act up. Act up, and my grandmother made me do some cleaning. I got mad because... I felt like, you know, that was wrong. So guess what I did? I went out and I stole her van. At 11 years old, I'm driving a vehicle. I can't barely see over the wheel. I'm driving. I got from Cabo Village all the way to Ogeechee Road. When I got there, I tried to make that turn, young people. I could have killed myself or somebody else on that road. The car would not turn as fast as I thought it was going to turn. I tapped the gas, and I ran into a speed limit sign, and the glass shattered. And I ran into a telegram pole. I hurt my knee, and I hurt my arm. Hurt my knee and my arm. I just wanted to run, but I was too hurt to run, so I laid on the ground. Laid on the ground, it came, took me to the hospital. My grandma was there. She was just like, why? why? Why did you do that, son? I couldn't tell her why I was doing that. I didn't start telling people why I was hurting until now. Working with young people, I began to do research on myself of why I was hurting, why I was reacting the way that I was reacting. Because guess what? One of the first things that I learned about this mentoring and this speaking, most young people, you blame yourselves for your parents not being together, young people. That is not true. You cannot control what other people do, young people. Only thing you can control in life is what you do. You determine your fate. You determine how successful you become. Or you determine if you want to make those doubters, those haters, whatever they say about you become true. Or do you want to make your dream goals and aspirations become reality? That's what I'm about. So when my dad went away, when I tried to you know, be defined and try to get where he was at, around the corner from in the juvenile, it didn't work. It took me, put me in some braces, sent me back on home. My grandma was just in there crying. To this day, I still feel like I owe my grandmother a vehicle. Because guess what? She didn't have to do what she had to do. She didn't have to take me. That's my mother and my dad's responsibility to raise me. How many people stay with your grandmothers? Raise your hand. I know we got some grandma. Take care of your grandma. Take care of your grandma. I say that to say is because I used to disrespect my grandmother. And now to this day, I realize that my disrespect to her was uncalled for. Only thing she was trying to do was help. She didn't ask for the task. The task was just placed on her to raise me and my brother. And so now to this day, when I do big engagements, I take money to her because of the things that she's done for me. She's invested into me. She could have gave it and threw it in the towel a long time ago. That was her son who came into my life and lied to me, but she took up his slack. So my grandmother is my mother, and my mama is my dad. That's how, I, that's how I was raised. Because at the end of the day, my dad, he didn't do nothing for me. He came into my life, and he made me kind of miserable. So after I did that, I was in school. 
with the same cool guys that was going to juvenile, sixth grade year. I decided, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to go to juvenile. We had a search. We had the alternative school. I knew I wasn't supposed to have ink pens. I knew it. I was going to Riley. Knew I wasn't supposed to have ink pens. I had a bunch of ink pens. I like gel ink pens. Like gel ink pens. I like to do a lot of writing. So gel ink pens, and we was having a search lockdown. They took all my pens. So you know what I did? I said, you know what? It's an auspicious time to go to juvenile. We got all the police here. We got the dogs here. Man, I'm, man, I'm going. I'm going today. So guess what I did? They took my pens. I knew I wasn't supposed to have them. I just go in the class. I just want to. Flipping desk, flipping desk, flipping desk. Took the teaching thing from around her neck. I said, you know what? You want to take my pants? How you like if I take something from you? Took the thing from around her neck. I was feeling good. I feel like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going. They're going to throw me on the ground. I'm going to handcuffs. I'm going out with a bang. Yeah, I went out with a bang, all right. Bang your behind back in the sixth grade next year. Bang you with an expulsion packet. That's the bang I went out with. I didn't get the intended result. I didn't get the intended consequence. But guess what? If you keep trying at something, whether it's good or bad, <laughs> You will get what you're looking for. You keep hanging around with the wrong crowd because they getting away with it. You will get what you're looking for. Let me tell you, sometimes we get in trouble for being someone that we're not supposed to be. See, the career criminals will get away with something. When they bring a newbie or look out, he'll be the one to go to jail because guess what? He ain't supposed to be there. He don't know nothing about what he's supposed to be doing. He's so green. He's so green. And guess what? He want to hang out with them. That was me. I was so green. So they, they suspelled me. Began to stay home. Time was on my hand. Then I began to just do little crazy stuff to go back and forth to jail. I'm talking about just crazy, stupid stuff. Every two weeks, I'm going to jail. So I was 11, 11 years old. was the first time I went to juvenile, four days before I turned 12. God bless this young man because uh, he was killed back in my city. My quail band, this young man told me the first thing he said when I walked through that juvenile door and walked in that unit, his first words to me was, little bro, you do not belong here. Do not come back. Little bro, you do not belong here. Do not come back. And I'm so hard head. I ain't going to tell you, I was scared. I was crying like a baby. I ain't going to front. And I say, man, you in here, you, you telling me this? Man, all right, man, don't worry about it. Tell, tell me where I'm supposed to be. How does how this thing really work? I'm ready to see how this thing work. I got in there, you guys, and they put me in that four-by-four four cell, and they shut that door, and I could not open it no more. And my God, I'm going I'm to be honest with you guys. I went and I sat on that bunk. And I cried like a baby. I said, I just want to go home. I just want to go home. I ain't coming back no more. I got on my knees. I'm like, just get me out of here. I ain't coming back. But guess what? That was a front. That was a front because sometimes when, we put, when we're in certain situations, we just want to get out of that situation for that moment. And then once I enter back into society, because when you're locked away, you're, you're not in society. You're, you're not. So when I got back into society, things changed. I went to doing the same thing. The same exact thing. So two weeks went by, I'm back for something else. Something stupid. Continue, 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 continue. So I went there nine times. Then the tenth time, it was crazy. This is what I mean to tell you guys. When you get your life on track or you are trying to do something, sometime what you do in the past come get you later down the line. For every, con for every action, there's a consequence on people. Just because you get away with something today, <laughs> Doesn't mean you got away scot free. It can come down and get you three days later, month later, years later. So always remember that. If you're in the market for affordable transportation, come on into Dublin Auto Sales. Getting to work, school, or around town every day requires dependable transportation. And that's what you'll find at Dublin Auto Sales. We offer in house financing too, so credit is never an issue. See Wayne Kemp or any of his friendly staff today. Bill Toppings, Alan Fields, TJ DeRochi, or Freddie Cook. Look for Dublin Auto Sales at 1705 Telfair Street and at 406 North Jefferson and 511 North Jefferson, where you'll find a great deal. Dublin Auto Sales, affordable transportation you can count on. Badcock Home Furniture and More is your home store where you'll find great savings on new living room sets, sofas, love seats, recliners, and more. Badcock Home Furniture and More has great savings every day on bedding and bedroom sets.
Shop Badcock Home Furniture and more for a great selection of dining room sets. And save every day on electronics and appliances at Badcock Home Furniture and more. 1927 Highway 441 South in Dublin. Call 275-3144 for more information. Or stop by and see Wendy and Tim Sumner or any of their friendly staff today at Badcock and more Home Furniture Store, where no credit is ever refused. So, guess what? Went to school. I was doing good in school, too. Well, they were, I was doing all right my eighth grade year at Scott Alternative School. Still in Alternative School. I was doing okay. Well, they weren't really reporting what I was doing. So, I was looking good to the Board of Education. I had been there five years. I think they were tired of me, ready for me to go. So, this day, I received a packet to go back to regular school. Eighth grade year, I'm thinking, woo! Yeah, I'm about to go back to regular school, high school, public, all the girls, the sports. My bro going to be on the court. Yeah. Guess what? I went to court. I didn't know what I was going to court for. I thought I was going to court for getting in trouble with a teacher. No, I was going to court for something I did at the house. Yeah, I left something under the pillow. Came back home. Everybody was playing like everything was gravy. Why two months later, they coming to me talking about I got court. So I go in court, not knowing what to expect, thinking I'm going about this teacher. No, sir, we got you for this charge and this charge. I say, huh? Yeah, we got you for possession and criminal trespassing, sir. Huh? Man, you know what? I got my packet and my book back to go back to regular school. I really just need the judge to sign off on a, as a letter of recommendation, and we can really get out of here, and we can forget whatever charge, you know what I'm saying? I'm doing good. No, uh-uh. You're going to pay now. We tired of you. That was my 10th time, y'all. That's my 10th time going to juvenile. So I'm thinking, I'm getting ready to get this signature from this judge. But no, boy, you getting ready to go do some time. Nah, these folks tired of you. Know the words what the judge was, what the DA was? DA said, you know what? We're tired of you. We don't know what else to do with you. They've been trying to commit me to the Department of Juvenile Justice, but the judge would always buck. He would say, nah, mm -mm. I don't feel like he's a threat to the, to the community. Guess what? His hands were tied then. They committed me to the state. So I wasn't able to take CRCT because they had already taken it in juvenile. We was taking CRCT the next day in Chatham County. So I was like, man, what am I going to do? Then come to find out, I end up having to sit in there 10 days, 10 days for somebody to come and tell me again what they're going to do with me. At that point, all rights were taken from my grandmother. She couldn't say nothing. She couldn't say, boy, you're going to go here or you're going to go there. These other people were controlling my life. See, I say that to tell you young people, don't ever let nobody take control of you and what you have to do in life. See, if you go out there and you do the wrong thing, that's when you have to start answering the people that's going to be able to control your life and tell you what you can and what you cannot do, and they can really hinder you and stop you. Those are the type of people you want to avoid. I'm talking about from law enforcement to friends, anybody that is not right, leave them alone. Don't try to follow the wrong role models. Please try to follow the positive role models. But guess what? If you do follow the wrong role models, learn from them and learn how not to be like them. See, that's why when I came into this entrepreneurial business, I was, I'm able to be successful because I worked so much for people that I did not like working for. I had so many problems within the last few years of working till I said, you know what? I can't work for nobody. So that's why I'm here today to inspire you guys. And let you guys know that, guess what? When I thought I had it together, when I thought I was getting ready to go to public school, I got knocked down. But guess what? I had to get back up. So when they came in, guess what they said? They wrote three things on the paper. They said, YDC, YDC, and YDC. Sir, we don't know what to do with you. You're going to serve 18 to 24 months in a youth detention center. I said, I can't do it. Mm -mm, I can't do that. Now. 18 to 24, the most I have already done was 30 days. But guess what? Things worked out. They sent me to Marietta. This is one of the most embarrassing moments of my life right here, y'all. They came and got me out of the juvenile, drove me to Marietta, Georgia, in a jumpsuit. And guess where they took me to eat at? You ever heard of the Varsity in Atlanta? Man, y'all know how busy that place be? Imagine walking in there with a jumpsuit on with Chatham County Detention Center on the back of it. Hell, I ain't cut. That ain't me. I had to be cool, cut, shaved up, you know what I'm saying? And that's where these folk got me at in a jumpsuit. Man, I was so mad. And the place that I went to, they didn't even accept me. Because guess what? These people read me off of black and white. They didn't know who I was as a person. See, that's the difference between school write-ups and the real world write-ups. 
See, in school, the disciplinary forms, yeah, some of the principals, the teachers, they know you. They can tell if a teacher's being, you know, and they can go from that. But in the real world, when you get wrote up by that law enforcement officer, when you go apply for that job, <laughs> They're not reading that discipline before and saying, oh, I know this person, this, that, and the third. What they're doing is saying, this person did this, this person did that. Oh, disqualify. Oh, I don't want to deal with that. No, that's not the type of behavior we're going to have on this job. Oh, that's not the type of person I want to give the opportunity to. So these people looked at my resume, and I'm not talking about my good resume. These folks looked at my juvenile bad resume. They said, we don't want them. We don't want them. But guess what? New birth, Savannah, New birth ministry, Reverend Vaughn. Right here on uh, this highway over here, Dublin, Georgia. <laughs> Much love to this guy, man. They accepted me. I guess spent five months down here in Dublin, Georgia, guys, in Reverend Vaughn's boys' home. I believe I seen his granddaughter over here somewhere. Okay, I seen Reverend Vaughn's granddaughter. I reached out to them yesterday to let them know I would be down here. Reverend Vaughn helped change my life. We went to church every day. It was things that I did in his home that, I really learned, but I stepped up to the plate to actually do many things to show myself as a leader. Once I went to Reverend Vaughn's boys' home, I began to want to be a leader. I also began to want to give back to my community and also inspire similar young people like myself who were trying to be somebody that they wasn't to not go down that route. And from that day forward of me going through what I went through and spending that time in Dublin, Georgia, my life began to change slowly but surely. But I still had hiccups. I still got knocked down. And I still continue to get back up. So when I came down here, man, it was fun, but it wasn't fun. That's where I got the concept of not watching TV from. See, there's rules and regulations everywhere you go. <laughs> and I came down here while they were in school. So Monday through Friday, they couldn't watch TV. Rules and regulations. You took two-minute showers. You drunk water every day. You drunk apple juice in the morning. You ate. Grits and eggs every day. This stuff used to be watery, all different people cooking. But guess what? I couldn't complain. That's all I had to eat. That's what made me a hunter. That's all I had to eat. Guess what? I was appreciative of grandma. I was appreciative of them home cooked meals, but I was eating good. But guess when I came down here, I went home. Them boys say, Boy, you been working out. Yeah. I was like, Nah, I wasn't working out. I was eating uh, I was eating them three meals a day and that one snack. That's what that's the eating good I was getting. So you become appreciative of everything else that you had. And I became appreciative of my situation when I was hearing the other people's stories. You may think your story is bad. <laughs> but boy, you have people that are around you whose story may be even worse. But more so what you do when people tell you their story, use that as inspiration. Use that to go harder. You know, Use that to motivate you to do something different or to take on their problem and come up with a solution to it. See, that's what I do now. When I have young people reach out to me and tell me different things, I had a young lady tell me something, now I want to do a women's tour. I want to do something special for the women because women are strong. Young men, young men, young men. Make sure you respect these women. You have to respect these women because your mother, your grandmother, your sister. I have a three-year-old daughter now. So once I had my daughter, my respect for women became woo. But guess what Dr. Jonah tell you? <laughs> when he was my principal, my respect for women was woo. A lot of my teachers that I disrespect were women. My brother used to point out, you don't never disrespect a men teacher like that. I was like, I said, boy, what? Man, what you talking about? I said, and I had to realize. I said, boy, you know what? You're absolutely right. I ain't really ever disrespect no man like that unless I was real, real mad. So after the eight months, I mean, after the six months, I came home and I began to go to Dr. Jordan School, Savannah High School. Man. I always wanted to be a blue jacket. The whole family was a blue jacket. So it's only right to be a blue jacket. Am I all right? How many alumni, parents, and sisters, and brothers we have in here? Who, who all got brothers and siblings that graduated from Dublin High? Y'all don't do that in Dublin? I'm about to say, I know we, okay, we follow the trend. All right, just making sure. Just making sure y'all engaged. That's all, just checking. So, man, got back home, mixed up in the paperwork again. But I was lucky enough to even be able to go back to regular school due to I missed the hearing that they had when I was supposed to have the hearing. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all. I missed the eighth grade CRCT now. Yeah. So I got discouraged. I thought I was going to be sitting in eighth grade. So I'm going to be two grades behind? Oh, man, this ain't going to work. Got here in Dublin. I took the math and the reading part. 
This is why I say you need to dominate. I was the underdog. There were like five or six parts of CRCT, but I was only able to take two. So that means I had less of a chance of being as great as someone else in taking this test and passing it with flying colors. Because I only had two portions, everybody else had five. Well, guess what? Some of the tests I didn't pass, but I had done so much work there. They were like, nah, we can't let you stay in eighth grade. We're going to move you up to ninth. So they moved me up to ninth, and I thank God for that. Oh, yeah, I thank them for that. So got home to ninth grade. They had my paperwork to go to Johnson. I said, oh, I can't go to Johnson. No, uh -uh, my brother, them going to get me. So I had to stay out a few weeks. Paperwork got finalized. I was able to go to Savannah High. Why not put that tax return to good use this year and head on over to Hometown Supply in downtown Dublin, where you'll find a great line of golf carts, utility trailers, zero-turn mowers, and so much more. A little down goes a long way at Hometown Supply, and you can set up your account today. Talk to Glenn Register or any of his friendly staff, because we finance what we sell. Hometown Supply, located in downtown Dublin, across from the skyscraper. Call 272-0345. Kevin Tanner, a lifelong resident of Lawrence County, is now a candidate for Lawrence County Commissioner, District 5. Call Kevin today at 410-0290. Kevin Tanner, candidate, Lawrence County Commissioner, District 5. High school, woo! This is what y'all ready for. Y'all better wake up. High school, ninth grade, met the famous Dr. Tony Jordan. My God, man. The guy who changed my name from Malik Jones to Joker. <laughs> the guy who used to walk around. Do he got a blow horn for y'all? He got a blow horn for y'all? Oh, man, y'all missed it. Y'all talking about <laughs> Eastside High? Man, this guy right here used to walk around with a blow horn. Y'all got it good. And be on it loud, too. That way I know how to make this woo sound fun. That's what you say. Woo! -hoo -hoo! That's all you used to hear coming down the hall. Let's get in class, guys. Let's get in class, guys. Where you supposed to be, son? Where you supposed to be, son? Yeah, that's Dr. John right there. Oh, I know. <laughs> man, I can't do nothing but love the guy and love the man that he created. This guy has definitely helped me in a lot of ways, helped me to understand respect. Also understand that you never know who's watching and who knows who. That's, that's the key to everything I learned from him. You never know who knows who. I was representing something in the community and I was behaving one way, but I was in school carrying myself a whole different way. See, in a community, I'm this old stand-up kid, you know, a little bad, you know, but not really too bad. But at school, pff, man, every day I probably seen Dr. John. He probably had to tell me to go to class or get out the hallway or something like that. But in the community, I was working with Chatham County Youth Commission, working with different things. So one day I decided to go to school. And I told him I was going to tell y'all about this. I told him. I told him about several times. I'm going go to decide to go to class, and I want to disrespect the teacher. Boy, that was one of the worst mistakes I made on that particular day after I had told him who I was working with. I was working with the alderman in Savannah, Van Johnson, Chatham County Youth Commission. When this man found out, he was excited at first. Hey, you know, you're the first student that I ever had to serve on Savannah Youth Commission, you know, blase, blase. But soon I disrespect that teacher. Now you know I'm going to report to Van Johnson, right? Come on, man. You can't keep that between us, man. Guess what? He reported it, and I had an email saying that, Malik, your character, your behavior is not the type of behavior that we want to represent Chatham County Youth Commission in the Savannah Chatham County Public School System. I could do nothing but be mad at myself. For a long time, long, long time, I was mad at Dr. Joy. But when I became a man, I understand that I had to only be mad at myself because not only did I cause that, I caused myself not to meet my idol. That same year, Chatham County Youth Commission met my idol, President Obama. So I was heated. I said, you know what? Boy, Dr. Jordan is so mean and so nasty for that one. Eh? He don't even know what he did. But guess what? He taught me something. He taught me that you never know who knows who. And if you carry yourself one way here, you have to carry yourself the exact same way everywhere because you never know who knows who. 
You never know who knows who. So I got there. First thing I did, sat down for the counseling at Savannah High School. I said, hey, listen here. I'm a grade behind. I want to graduate my class in 2015. We came up with a three-year graduation plan. Boy, it was a lot of hard work. But guess what? Hard work does pays off. I graduated my class in 2015. But let me tell you how I got there. I'm getting ready to close, you guys. Give me a few more minutes. I see you looking like, oh, man, he talking our head off. But this is where the story get real. This is the best part of the story. This is my most inspiring part of my story in my life. So ninth grade, I went to school, played around. Ninth grade is one of the most important years of high school, young people, because guess what? Ninth grade, if you do everything you're supposed to do ninth grade, you'll have time to do a little knocking off probably about 10th or 11th grade year. But see, I only had three years of high school, three. So that time to knock off and play, I didn't have that fourth year if I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and that's graduate my class in 2015. So we made a graduation plan, ninth grade year. I took Twilight. I was in Twilight every day. I'm taking all these ninth grade classes. I'm taking 10th grade lit. I'm taking 10th grade social study in Twilight, doing whatever I need to do to get this thing on, behind, get my behind out of here in 2015 with my class. So guess what? I did it. 10th grade year, I began to come to the realization I did not like math like that, and I had to be taught a certain way in order for me to actually get the concept because I had this teacher who didn't want the answer. She wanted you to show your work, young people. Those math teachers that want you to show your work, you better love them, especially if you're going to college. Because guess what? Freshman year of college, I had a professor who said, I don't care about your answer, right or wrong. I want to see your work. I'm grading work. So that's why I tell you guys, a lot of these things that you think you're not going to need, uh, y'all think, oh, this teacher just telling me this because they don't like me, or they want to be hard, they want to be mean. No. They're preparing you for the real world. They're preparing you for college. And college, they're not going to do all that talking. They're going to guess what? Oh, they ain't here today. Don't worry about it. One last person I got to go help today. Because they paid. They already paid. So I did everything I had to do. 12th grade year. <clears throat> Boy, 12th grade year was hard. It was a struggle. But I got through it. And I got through it despite everything that I went through. I lost my great-grandmother in August. One of the most important people to me who always believed in me, who actually sat with me every time I got suspended from school. That's who used to keep me so my grandma would go to work. And I also had a daughter. So the odds were against me. And also, the year before, I thought I wanted to, you know, be a class clown and do a school prank. And I wanted to go bash the seniors' little yearbook signer, right? Guess who my principal was? Look over there, y'all. I don't want to look at him right now. So I went in there, some water balloons. Man, we had a bar. I'm talking about we had water balloons, water guns. Look, all the, we was in the cafeteria, and I went in there swinging, throwing balloons. Pow, 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 pow. Well, wham! Malik Jones, come here. Dr. Man, everybody out here throwing balloons. Why me? I don't know if he knew that I planned it or what, but I stayed home that whole morning, filling up water balloons, calling my friends, like, yeah, boy, get the water balloons and water guns. We got to get them. We got to get them. Yep, got me 10 days at the beginning of my senior year to stay home for school. And guess what? He wasn't even the principal. He wasn't even the principal when I came back the next year, and I still had to stay home 10 days. That was even crazy. That's why I say, <laughs> you do something now, <laughs> you might get away with it. I thought I was going to get away with it, but I paid for it the beginning of my senior year. Ten days. Ten days suspended. So I came in as an underdog. Despite starting school late, I had to take 12 classes. Everybody else took eight. I had to take 12. 12th 12 grade, 12 classes. That's how I looked at it. But let me tell you how I got through it. At the beginning of that school year, I wrote down that I'm going to graduate on time. That I'm going to pass these tests. I'm going to do everything I need to do to graduate with my class. And I did it. But it wasn't easy. It was not easy. So the first semester, I only passed one class. My report card came out. One class because this young man knocked my best friend Pete's out of her hand. I beat him up. They say I was wrong. I say I was right. I got suspended. I wasn't able to take none of the ending test. So guess what? 
I only passed one class, and I want to stay with Jim. Yeah, I like Jim. I only passed gym class. So when I came back in January, I had to make up those three classes. I had to take the four classes that for the new semester, and I still had Twilight. I still had about at least three to four classes of Twilight. In mind, I told you, everybody else taking eight classes. I'm taking 12. I'm taking four additional classes in Twilight. So I was like, dang. First thing somebody told me who's sitting out here, they told me, they say, man, you know what? Boy, you ain't going to graduate. Boy, you is not going to graduate acting like that. Boy, you is tripping. Boy, you don't want to graduate. I don't want to hear it. You ain't about to graduate. Get what I told them. I said, hey, man, how do you want your ticket? You want me to give it to you, or you want somebody else to give it to you? All I need for you to do is commit to being there June 3rd, 2015. I didn't argue. I didn't go back and forth because I knew the type of person he was. And guess what? I made it happen. And guess who was sitting there June 3rd? And his words to me afterward was, I know you would be able to do it. I said that because when I told you you wouldn't, I know you would prove to me that you could. So when these people doubt you, Man, you take it all up. Eat it up. Because I know some of you athletes, I had some of y'all this weekend, when them boys be on the court talking about you weak and all that, you be like, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, I, yeah, uh-huh, they know who I'm talking to. Yeah, come on. Man, I'm about to do you. I'm about to dunk on you. Well, dunk on this inner course test. <laughs> dunk on showing these teachers some respect. <laughs> That's what I want you to dunk on, because guess what? In order to go to the next level, young people, you got to be a student first. It's called a student athlete in high school. Student athlete in college, without these tests, without this, the knowledge and these tools that these teachers are giving you, you guys are not going to be successful in the real world because they're going to eat you alive. They try to eat me alive. I guess what I tell them, you ain't going to eat me alive. I done been through so much. I done overcome enough to take out anything, anything that comes my way. And you guys can do the same. So let me leave you guys with some things here today before I get ready to go. The first thing I want you guys to do is write down, write down, write down, write down goals, goals, dreams, and aspiration. This is the auspicious time for you guys to write those things down because guess what? You guys are in ninth to 12th grade. You'll be 18 before you know it. Seniors, you'll be graduating before you know it. Juniors, you'll be graduating before you know it. And guess what? After graduation comes a new level. And that's why my tour is called The Portents of the Next Level. Because guess what? I'm three years in, you guys, to the next level. Three years in. I've been to college. I've been in the workforce. And now I'm on the entrepreneur side of the real world. I'm only 21, guys. I'm 21, and I tell you guys I'm 21 because guess what? If you guys do what I tell you to do today, you guys can be way, way farther than where I'm at at the age of 21. Write down your goals, dreams, and aspirations. From this day, to the end of this year, then you go to get a page, ain't gonna write one year from now, three years from now, and five years from now. And after you do that, look over it, read them out loud, and put I will accomplish, I will be, or I will do. You do all of those things, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, whatever it is in life, it is that you want to accomplish, you will accomplish. I did just that, young people. Last year, 2017, I wrote down goals on February the 2nd. February 10th, one of those goals became reality. I got a car, a new car. I wrote down I want to do just this, you guys, last year. And my God, look at me now. I'm right here now speaking to a group of young people in Dublin High School. This was a dream. This was a goal. At first, I had to write it down to make it not become only just a thought, not just become a dream, not just become an aspiration. I had to come to my senses, write it down, make a plan, and execute it. And that's the same thing I want you guys to do. So your first goal should be, as I get ready to end, your first goal should be is, I will pass all of my standardized tests this school year. That should be your first goal. Pass your standardized tests, and whatever goals, dreams, or aspirations you guys have after that, so far be it. But that's the first goal I want you guys to write down. And I want to thank you guys for giving me your undivided attention. You guys was a great crowd. Give me your undivided attention and allow Inspired by Malik to inspire you guys today. And I really appreciate your cooperation. Thank you.